While Israel's military retaliates against Hamas, the people of Israel band together. And leaders at the Appalachian Wireless Arena in Pikeville host a Christ-centered conference. Plus, we are tracking our next rainmaker by this weekend. Those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. In Israel, sirens have been wailing across the southern city of Ashkelon. Israel has retaliated with relentless airstrikes on the Gaza Strip and has vowed to topple the Hamas rulers of the territory. Israel is several hours ahead of us, so it is nighttime there. We're, and obviously this video taken after dark tonight, Israel's military intercepted the latest barrage of rockets fired by Hamas militants from the Gaza Strip. Israel's war with Hamas has that entire nation working for one common goal while help is arriving from Israeli Americans anxious to join the fight. CBS's Haley Ott has more on that from Tel Aviv. Israel's civilian population is mobilizing. Instead of uh, being home and listening to the news and crying, I'm here. Across the nation, volunteers are gathering supplies for war victims and soldiers as Israel braces for a long fight. Israel is at war, and the Israeli civilians is not something you want to play with. And while the supplies are flooding in, so are people with connections to Israel from overseas. This has been a tough couple of days. Menachem Perez grew up in Miami and later served as a paratrooper in the Israeli army. After Saturday's terrorist attacks, he knew he had to return immediately. They've got women, children. Somehow, whatever we need to do to, to help out. Perez is working to rejoin the Israeli military and in the meantime, preparing to help civilians stay safe. Can you tell me a bit about what's being organized? It's been a, a fight of terrorists against, against innocent civilians and, and those civilians are arming themselves um, now and um, we're, we're trying to figure out what we can do. With friends on the front lines, Perez has put his life back in the U.S. on hold to be here and help his country any way he can. Haley Ott, CBS News, Tel Aviv, Israel. We are tracking some nice weather across the mountains for your Tuesday afternoon, but some rain chances are not too far away. But this evening, though, we stay dry under that mainly clear sky. Here's a live look from the WYMT studio in Hazard, and you can see plenty of blue sky back in the distance. That temperature here in Perry County at 68 degrees. Most of us right now in the upper 60s and at lower 70s, up to 70 from Manchester, also Somerset, and 66 over in Pikeville at this hour. We are much warmer today than we were yesterday, up to 10 or 15 degrees warmer in some areas on your Tuesday. And this is all thanks to an increase in that sunshine, all thanks to high pressure. But that cold front and that area of low pressure that brought showers on Monday is now off to the south. But that will continue to move back to the north slowly as a warm front by Thursday, also Friday. So that means an increase in those temperatures by Thursday, Friday. Also, an increase in those rain chances by this weekend. So a busy forecast on the way as more showers are likely by Saturday, also Sunday day and more showers into early next week as a cool down is also on the way. So again, we stay busy into next week. That full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. Churches and organizations with a common goal gathered in Pikeville today for Christ centered conference together for the mountains, a conference created by Jared and Bethany Arnett invited Jesus followers of all kinds to the Appalachian Wireless Arena. The event included guest speakers, breakout sessions, and more as an effort to share struggles, successes, and stories of church and community. They're really inspiring. Like, it's so obvious that God really is at work. And so to get to bring those people and just share that story and, and people here from uh, around the region, the, the stories of what God is doing, it, it just becomes a catalyst for more. This was the second year for the gathering. Arnett says he is proud of the partners and the attendees who felt led to keep it going. 
Exciting news today for soccer fans in Kentucky. Fans of the Lexington Sporting Club now know where the team will call home. This afternoon, LSC announcing where it will build its permanent stadium. Samantha Valentino explains why this announcement is good news for Lexington. This season, the Lexington Sporting Club played all of their home games at Georgetown's Toyota Stadium. Tuesday, though, the team announced that they'll soon have a brand new stadium of their own. This is home for us. This is Lexington. This is where we want to be. We want, we want to develop a community relationship where our fans can all get together and have a great time. What now looks like just a bunch of empty space will soon be home to the Lexington Sporting Club. The new stadium will be located off of Athens Boonesboro Road near I-75. This location near the interstate will make this facility attractive and convenient for thousands of people. As mayor, I look at this announcement through an economic development lens. This is the type of quality of life addition that will help us attract and grow new jobs. The stadium will initially have a capacity of 5,000, but it has the potential to expand to a maximum of 11,000. WKYT's Dave Baker says the team shouldn't have any trouble filling those seats. As of a couple of weeks ago, uh, Lexington Sporting Club was number three in the entire uh, USL in terms of their attendance for the first year, and that's just amazing. The facility will also include seven training fields, allowing both professionals and kids to train on a daily basis. Kentucky's kids are gonna see if they wanna be a professional soccer player, they can. The goal is to have the stadium complete and open in August of 2024. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Governor Andy Bashir says the seven new training fields alone are expected to generate more than $50 million in direct spending during the next 10 years. Today is the last day to register to vote here in Kentucky. According to the Kentucky Secretary of State's office, online registration closed at 4 o'clock today. Mailed registrations can be postmarked today and be counted. Registrations returned to the clerk's office are accepted by the close of business. The Secretary of State's office says the Columbus Day holiday caused a single day delay. Coming up as First at Four continues, the cost of a postage stamp may be going up again soon. Plus, we could see some 80s later on this week. The details on warmer temperatures after this break.